Hi and welcome to the We Are Zion Sermon Podcast. We are a local church based here in Chennai, India. We are so glad you are with us and hope that this will encourage, inspire and instill fresh faith in you. We are doing a short series on prayer as we head into the season of Pentecost. Prayer cannot be the Christian's backup plan but our sole option. In the times that we live in, the spiritual battle around us is real. and without a vibrant and spirit filled prayer life we will not make it out alive christine shares with us today on how we can model our prayer life on jesus and pray as he did we pray that as you listen in that you get excited about all the ways in which you connect with god through prayer hi church it's such a joy to teach you again on prayer it's not something that we have figured out completely it's something we're learning along the way and Um we have been excited to uh, bring you along on this journey of learning about prayer together. We looked at how prayer helps us see the unseen. We looked at how we can use scripture to pray and engage in spiritual warfare. And today we're going to be looking at how we can pray the Jesus way. In the way Jesus taught us, the instructions he gave us about prayer and how he modeled prayer for us. That's what we're going to be looking at today. I was reading this story, I'm not sure if it's true, um but I was reading about this Young woman she was a single mom her little one was at home with a babysitter she was at work when she gets a call from her babysitter and says ma'am the, chi- the child is sick she's running a high temperature can you go to the pharmacy pick up some medicines and then bring it home for us so the mother frantically shuts down work gets into her car goes to the pharmacy picks up the medicine when she comes back to the car she realizes that the keys were locked inside the car she doesn't know what to do um she calls the babysitter and says this is my predicament i don't know what to do and the babysitter gives her an idea she says look around if you find an old hanger you know a clothes hanger if you find it anywhere use that and open the car door so the lady says okay she cuts the call she she's asking god lord i don't know where i'm going to find a clothes hanger help me she turns around and in the gravel there's an old clothes hanger broken and just lying there So she takes it and she's looking at it but then she rea- she's she's so grateful that you know her prayer was immediately answered. But then she realizes she doesn't know what to do with the clothes hanger. She's like what am I going to do with this? How do I open a door with this? And then she says Lord help me. I don't know how to use this to open the door. She finishes praying that prayer when a biker comes into the driveway. He's an old biker, he's got a scarf on his head, doesn't look very well kept, um looks a bit haggard. and he drives in and stands beside her and then she's just wondering still what to do when he gets off the bike and says ma'am can i help you and she says uh, sir i i'm i'm stuck here my child is at home my keys are in the car and i don't know what to do with this hanger and he says don't worry i'll help you he gets off the bike straightens out the hanger uses it to open the car and gets her in when she gets in she says sir thank you so much um you must be such a good man to stop and help me in such a way and he says laughingly he says ma'am i'm not a good man i'm an ex convict i just got out of jail today i was put in jail for robbing a car and so the woman looks up to heaven and says thank you lord you sent me a professional while the story is funny um the truth is this that prayer works whether it does something in the heavenly realms it does something in us it creates room for hope it it moves us into partnership with god and i believe that as we learn to pray the jesus way it will shift how we look at prayer no longer will we look at it as a drudgery something we have to do or check checklist but instead it will come into it with joy and with hope when we look at the gospels and how jesus lived on earth we find that he laid down some basic principles about praying the first principle he laid down was that we must be persistent in prayer when you look at luke 11 verses 9 to 10 this is what he says So I say to you ask and it will be given to you seek and you will find knock and the door will be opened to you for everyone who asks receives the one who seeks finds and to the one who knocks the door will be opened Luke 18:1 7 and 8 says Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up To cut a long story short that was the parable of the persistent widow. He says this woman goes to an unjust judge and keeps begging him for justice and he doesn't care, he doesn't bother. But after a prolonged period of time the judge who is unrighteous says how how can me who is an unrighteous judge not give this woman justice? She is coming and bugging me night and day. 
And this is what Jesus says, will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. What have you been asking God for repetitively? Have you been like me? Many times I think, God, I sound like a spoiled child asking you for the same thing again and again and again. But when you read this, you realize he's saying, keep asking, keep seeking, keep knocking, don't stop. Our heavenly father is not like us earthly parents who when our child asks us for something repeatedly, we just say no, blanket no. He loves that we come into that place of familiarity with him and that we can keep coming to him and asking him for what we need. Don't get put off by, by you know, the fact that you're repetitively asking him for something. Jesus said, keep asking. It's okay. What have you been asking him for? Have you given up on some things? It's okay to come again and again with the same request to the Father. It's completely okay. He loves that you would consider him worthy of bringing that request again and again. The second principle that Jesus talked about was prayer not being a publicity stunt. He lived in a time when the Pharisees, the teachers of the law, the scribes and others were walking around in their flowing robes and, and forcing people to listen to them, demanded respect and also uh, prayed their prayers as a way of, um, you know, attracting attention and praise. Matthew 6 verses 5 to 8, he says, When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corner to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask for them. Prayer is about growing in our intimate relationship with God. It's really not it being an oratorical competition. The greatest words I can use, how I can embellish my request and ask God, how I can show others about this relationship. No, it's such a private pursuit and it's really about um, pursuing the heart of God, listening for God's voice, presenting our requests to him. It's that simple. So he says, don't portray this image that, you know, you're praying so much. And another reference he talks about when you're fasting, put oil on your head and look normal. Don't, you know, make yourself look so somber and that people ask you and say, oh, I'm fasting and praying. No, he says, do it. It's part of your life. It's part of your routine. Let it not be something that you use to shove it down someone's throat that you are holier than them. Our pride cannot be in the fact that we pray. Our pride must be in the one we pray to. Paul writes, if anyone will boast in anything, let him boast in the Lord. Our pride should not be in our prayer life. Our pride should be the one we pray to. The fact that he's a prayer answering God, that he's a listening God. The third thing is that this is something that Jesus himself did. In John 17, you see how Jesus prayed for himself, then he prayed for his disciples, and then he prayed for the ones who would be saved in the future. And I believe that we must pray for ourselves before praying for others. So often it's easy to, uh, you know, be this intercessor and praying for everybody and all the needs, which is great. But have you prayed for yourself? Have you prayed the scriptures over yourself? Have you asked God to reveal things about your life, but your family to you first? It's okay to pray for yourself, especially women, mothers. We're so caught up in praying for our husbands, our children, our parents, our in-laws. We forget to pray for ourselves. It's important that we cover ourselves. Jesus himself, when he, before he prayed for his disciples, he tells, he talks to God about himself. He says, I've done all that you've asked me to do. Be glorified in my life. And I wonder how different our prayer lives would be if we would begin. It's not a selfish thing to begin by praying for yourself. Pray for yourself first and then pray for others. Ask God to reveal any sin in your life. This is something that I've started doing. Before I pray for anyone else, before I ask God for revelation about any issues in our life, I first ask him, Lord, show, things, show me things in my life. And he never fails to disappoint. There's always stuff that he wants to reveal about me, that he wants to change in me. So I would encourage you that you would first pray for yourself. Another important principle is that you must pray in humility before the Father, but you must walk in authority after that. If you look at Jesus, he spent much time praying in solitude. It would say the disciples probably went home, but then he would go into a solitary place. He would go into the hills 
and he would pray and he would spend a lot of time in prayer and then come back in the morning and through the day he operated in power he drove out demons he healed the sick he taught power packed days but the the basic thing about that was a lot of prayer he was so humble before the lord before his father he kept connecting with him but the offshoot of that was walking in authority and power Mark 8:33 says this when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples he rebuked Peter get behind me satan he said you do not have in mind concerns of god but merely human concerns Jesus did not rebuke Peter he rebuked the one who was using Peter as a mouthpiece authority power he didn't cower before negativity he didn't flinch he didn't turn away he battled it straight on Mark 4:39 he got up rebuked the wind and said to the waves quiet be still then the wind died down and it was completely calm if you've noticed that a lot of times when you've been in prayer for a bit of time you finish prayer and then you get back to regular life cooking or cleaning or back to work back to calls you will find that there will be some upheaval that happens some misunderstanding and the immediate reaction of ours as humans is to react to rather than respond to probably argue to get triggered um but the important thing to remember is that when we finish praying and step out of that prayer closet or prayer room or the prayer bench we now are clothed with the righteousness of Christ and we have the authority that he gave we have a delegated authority we are walking in power and authority that he has given to us and we should not give room for the things that the enemy throws at us to pull us down i remember this teaching by john and lisa bevier they they had they have four sons today their grandparents but this happened in the early days of their marriage and this is what they said lisa would say sometimes the atmosphere in the home will be so charged up the children will be out of control she and john would be having a lot of arguments getting in each other's face and soon she learned that the authority of the spiritual atmosphere in the home lay in them so what she would do is when she sensed that upheaval and that you know they were all being quarrelsome and fidgety she would bind every power of darkness that was working against them she would rebuke it in the name of jesus she say calm down we are going to we are we have the peace of christ in this home she would declare the promises of god she would rebuke the enemy she would say within half an hour the entire atmosphere in the house would change and i think that we need to remember this that we have all power all authority has been given to us to trample over snakes and scorpions that is what jesus gave us that is what god the father gave him that authority and he delegated that to us today you and i are not without that authority so we dare not be timid after we finish praying walk in that authority claim that authority as yours declare that authority to the spiritual realm so when we look at this again couple of principles persistence in prayer pays off prayer is not a publicity stunt pray for yourself before praying for others pray and then walk in power and authority those are a few principles now we're going to look at how according to jesus we need to know what to pray for okay now you might ask me um is it okay to pray for anything and everything absolutely it's completely okay jesus himself said ask god for anything and everything in my name so the first thing that we should pray for is everything isn't that amazing it can be from the smallest to the biggest thing john 16:23 to 24 says this In that day you will no longer ask me anything very truly i tell you my father will give you whatever you ask in my name until now you have not asked for anything in my name ask and you will receive and your joy will be complete many times we take this literally and we forget a very important aspect you and i should have come to the place of jesus being the lord of our lives we have to have declared with our mouth that Jesus is God and we have to allow him to be the master of our lives and then this promise comes into effect which means i can ask him for anything the wildest things dream scary prayers dream huge prayers bigger than you ever imagined and believe that in Jesus name he will grant it according to his perfect will according to his timing this is what cs lewis writes he says perhaps as those who do not turn to god in petty trials will have no habit or such resort to help them when the great trials come so those who have not learned to ask him for childish things will have less readiness to ask him for great ones we must not be too high minded i fancy we may sometimes be deterred from small prayers by a sense of our own dignity 
rather than of gods so you can absolutely ask god for the most silly small things and it sets us up it comes into this place of having a confidence in a god who cares for the largest things of our life and the smallest details as well ask him for anything ask him for everything the second thing that we according to jesus should ask for or pray for is more of the holy spirit now sometimes we're so content with the level of anointing we have you know we have the holy spirit he helps me he aids me along my way but he says in luke 11 11 to 13 this is what he says which of you fathers if your son asks for a fish will give him a snake instead or if he asks for an egg will give him a scorpion if you then though you are evil know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your father in heaven give the holy spirit to those who ask him a lot of times we think this is about just asking and receiving he's actually talking about the gift of the holy spirit when you ask this is a prayer he will never reject this is a prayer he will never deny he wants to give you more of the holy spirit have you been watching how others serve in church and you think lord i don't have any gifts i don't have anything to serve you with ask him ask the holy spirit to pour himself into you so that you begin to operate in the gifting of the holy spirit maybe you're saying i don't know if my life is bearing fruit i don't know if i'm impacting anyone else ask the holy spirit help me bear fruit so that others will taste and see that the lord is good ask for more of the holy spirit don't be shy about it don't be timid don't think well i'm not you know i have such a horrid past why would the holy spirit flood my life no he's not a respecter of men he comes when you ask he is given in abundance so ask for the holy spirit jesus also spoke in mark 13 he said talks about the end times in detail and a lot of times we get caught up in this apocalyptic scripture we get caught up in oh the end times the truth is we are living in the end times you read the newspaper you know we are living in the end times and very clearly jesus in the whole teaching in mark 13 he explains to us how we must pray that this the apocalypse as such the whole armageddon and all of that would not happen in winter he says pray doesn't happen in winter and oh goodness help god help the the nursing mothers and the pregnant women so he's predicting and telling us that it's going to be bad the end days are bad if if you watch the news and you see nations which are being torn by civil war by strife by war you see the suffering because of natural calamities You know that we are in the end times. You know that Jesus' return is imminent. But Jesus clearly asks us to pray for endurance in the end times. He says, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith? Which means, will my faith have endured till my time to go home arrives? Endurance. Pray for endurance. Don't take it for granted that you can endure. Pray for it, he says. he asks you to pray for a rich harvest of souls in these times we are living in the time when there is the harvest is plentiful the workers are few you can ask him he says pray to the lord of the harvest so that he will send out workers into the harvest field matthew 9 37 and 38 are you praying for more workers are you praying that you will be prepared for the second coming a lot of times we are pushing the content of the second coming but you and i we need to look at ourselves lord am i prepared if you were to come tonight if my number is called tonight am i ready for you will i enter paradise will i be with you for eternity pray for preparedness pray that we won't fall away jesus himself said pray for the end times pray that you will have endurance pray that there will be a rich harvest pray that you will be prepared he repeatedly talks about the parable of the virgins and so many other you know the, the wicked servant it's all about preparedness and preparedness comes in our prayer life when i'm praying the lord will show me areas in my life where i've backslidden where i've gone wayward he will show me areas where i need to tighten up my guard he will show me areas where i've not been alert he will prepare me pray for that pray for that jesus also asked us to pray that we will not fall into temptation luke 22:40 on reaching the place the mount of olives he said pray that you will not fall into temptation and this is funny because he leaves them a couple of them out in the garden of gethsemane and he he's heading in he's staying outside and he tells them don't fall into temptation and what do they do they fall asleep and if this is if you're someone like me the minute you sit to pray is when you feel the most sleepy when you sit to pray you remember all the things you've not done 
bigger issues than that it is required of us we are not superhuman i often tell this to my children when you know they are acting like you know other people have uh, greater sins in their life and they are like completely okay i say you know what none of us are saints here we are all sinners who have been saved by grace we are sinners at the the, the bottom line is this we are sinners but because of jesus we are saved and so let's not think that we can get through this life without praying to protect us from temptation we need god's protection from temptation we will fail there will be times when we we miss the mark so this is a preemptive prayer and saying lord keep me from temptation lord i'm hitting my mid, mid, middle age keep me from a midlife crisis let me not mess up protect my reputation protect my family let us not fall into any financial traps let us not be immoral in any way guard my eyes lord these are prayers we can pray because jesus said pray that you will not fall into temptation so these are the things that jesus says we must pray for he says ask me for anything in my name he says pray for more of the spirit he prays for says pray for the end times that you will have endurance he says pray that you will not fall into temptation the most important thing though is that jesus himself god in the flesh modeled prayer it was not like he he could have been above it right he's god he every person he touched and healed was someone he created he knew everything about them before they opened their mouth he knew what was in their mind he he created the earth he walked on why did he have to pray he was god himself he was 100% god 100% man he had power oozing out of him why did he need to pray i believe that he modeled prayer so that we would see how much we need it If you're thinking you can get by without prayer one liner is good a day I would urge you that you would step up your prayer life and see how God changes your life see how God starts moving things that you can actually visibly see Does God protect us even if we don't pray yes that's his goodness and grace but he loves when we come to him and ask He loves that we would actually take the time to sit there and bare our hearts to him and i believe that jesus modeled three kinds of prayers and i believe we can take you know step into that model and try it for ourselves the first kind of prayer style that he modeled was one of thanksgiving matthew 11:25 to 26 it says at that time jesus says i praise you father lord of heaven and earth because you've hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children yes father for this is what you were pleased to do a prayer of thanksgiving openly in front of disciples and many others he lifts his eyes up to heaven and thanks his heavenly father for the revelation that he's granting the disciples on another couple of occasions when he fed the 5000 he fed the 4000 it said he looked up to heaven he gave thanks and then broke the bread and you know what happened the rest is history many were fed many basketfuls were left behind everyone was content Jesus modeled thanksgiving. He was God himself. Why did he have to thank the Father? I believe he did it so that we will know how important thanksgiving is in our prayer lives. So often we bring our requests and literally it's like a you know a truckload we come we dump it on on our father's lap which is great. We forget to thank him for all that he has done. You remember the 10 lepers? nine all 10 were healed nine forgot and walked away one returned and jesus himself says weren't there 10 of you only one recognized remembered and thanked me for it jesus is surprised at that moment here's the thing thanksgiving shifts everything when our prayers are about thanksgiving you will start to find you have so much to thank god for that the petitions actually will decrease in their intensity you will start to see that the god who did all of this in my life can do this and more in the current situation the one who led me through that red sea through that jordan will lead me now as i walk through a wilderness he's not left me he hasn't changed that's what thanksgiving does the apostle paul writes that we shouldn't be anxious for anything but in everything by prayer and petition with thanksgiving he says make your requests known to god and so this is something that jesus modeled and i believe if anything that jesus if he did something it's good for us to try it out it's good for us to model our lives on that and so would would you and i in the midst of struggle in the midst of of conflict 
if we can raise up sacrifice of thanksgiving and praise it will shift the entire atmosphere i believe that thanksgiving confuses the enemy because when he's oppressing us on one side and we are saying thank you lord we believe that you're doing something good even in this situation i believe that you are unchanging the enemy is confused he's like what are they doing i'm trying to deplete them i'm trying to make them feel despair but this person is thanking god i don't get it so it's a very effective form of warfare prayer to to just keep singing your praise to keep speaking out in thanksgiving we are unbeatable when we are thankful remember that you and i we are unbeatable when we are thankful the second kind of prayer that jesus modeled was the lament matthew 26 verse 39 says going a little farther he fell with his face to the ground and prayed my father if it is possible may this cup be taken from me yet not as i will but as you will matthew 27 verse 46 says about 3 in the afternoon jesus cried out in a loud voice eli eli lama sabakthani which means my god my god why have you forsaken me a lament is not a complaint it is a rending of our hearts it's breaking it open and saying god this is my deepest wound you saw what this person did to me you saw what they're speaking about me lord you're hearing it lord i've been through so much why this additional burden also it's breaking my heart wide open so that he can see every wound as raw it is as it is it's saying i will not put up a show with you god i will not pretend to be okay i will not cover it up with well shaped words but i will weep before you and say lord help me lord meet me and voskamp says this lament is a cry of belief in a good god a god who has his ear to our hearts a god who transfigures the ugly into beauty complaint is the bitter howl of unbelief if in any benevolent god in this moment a distrust in the love of the father's heart isn't that amazing it's a distrust in the love beat of the father's heart bitterness complaint is different lament is coming before him naked and raw and bleeding and saying god this is me i don't know why this is happening help me it's like job sitting there broken pottery rubbing his skin in pain lost all his children lost his property and saying lord help me i thought i was doing the right thing what happened god that's what lament is jesus modeled it on that cross jesus modeled it in gethsemane he said lord help me if it is possible take this cup jesus again was human and god he humbly submitted to his father's will and yet and yet he lamented at that moment on the cross crying out for all to hear god why have you forsaken me you and i have permission to lament a christian in our journeys individually we are allowed to lament it's an important part of our beliefs don't think that you know you always have to have a tough exterior and a tough front you can let down your guard with the maker of your soul you can do it the third type type of prayer that jesus modeled was a prayer of declaration mark 7 verses 33 to 35 it says after he took him aside away from the crowd jesus put his fingers into the man's ears then he spit and touched the man's tongue he looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him ephafta which means be opened at this the man's ears were opened his tongue was loosened and he began to speak plainly just one word jesus just made a declaration be opened and it opened luke 22 luke 23 verse 34 it says jesus said father forgive them for they do not know what they are doing and they divided up his clothes by casting lots another declaration and this declaration when it was being made was what set into motion all the things that God was going to do through that moment it was because of that sacrifice a perfect sinless sacrifice on the cross that every man woman and child sins were forgiven jesus made a declarative prayer he declared a prophetic declaration over the situation which changed everything as we know it 
there is a time for each of us in our prayer lives to move from petitioning to declaring sometimes we always you know you sometimes feel like you're always groveling and asking god for something and honestly a petition is conversation it's saying lord i need this but what do you think i need right it's not really groveling but there is a time when you must move from petitioning to declaring what is it that you believe god has told you to declare in this season god i believe that health is my portion i believe that i'm going to succeed in what i put my hands to lord i believe that you're going to establish the work of my hands what are you declaring today you need to be very sensitive to the shift that will happen when the holy spirit will say stop asking declare the victory is already yours declare it now i have to give you a statutory warning it doesn't happen all the time so this is not some name it and claim it kind of thing no this is something that the holy spirit will lead you to do there will be times when you must keep asking seeking knocking but there is a time when there will be a shift and the holy spirit will say now declare believe it that is already yours ask for it as i close i want to just close with what jesus said it was a very pivotal moment jesus had the triumphal entry he came into jerusalem and after coming into jerusalem he comes into the temple and he sees the money changers and the the guys who was merchants and all of them and he creates a whip he chases them out and he says matthew 21 was 13 says it is written he said to them my house will be called a house of prayer but you are making it a den of robbers jesus was zealous for his church there's um, there's a verse which is referenced in this place which says zeal for your house consumes me the disciples remembered it and they knew that that's what was driving jesus' actions it was not anger it was not frustration it was a zeal for his father's house and today i want to leave this with you jesus looks at the body of christ today you know each of you you can be part of some church right where you're at if you're part of we are zion here this is a house of prayer for too long we have looked at the church as something that should feed our consumerist needs oh you know what i go there because i need to make connections for business i go there because i need that miracle if i don't get the miracle in one year i'm moving church or oh, they need to cater to my child's every need they need to do what i can't do for my child so often we have put demands on the local churches but this is jesus's dream for his church he says it will be called a house of prayer for all nations i want to ask you will you look at your church the body of christ with a simple view and say god i i want to step in there knowing it's a house of prayer i want to go in there so that along with other believers other members of the body of christ we raise our voices up to you that i will go there to be an instrument in your hands because the minute we look at it through the lens of jesus how jesus looked at the church it changes what our expectations of church need to be instead of putting that demand on your leaders oh you know what they pray those preach those empty sermons i don't get anything from it what if you started praying for your leaders what if you say you know what the, there's no events in this church super boring i have nothing to do the whole week what if you start asking god oh, lord help me to help them on their weekends give me a passion for souls what if you start to look at church the way jesus looked at the church that it's a house of prayer for all nations as we close i want to pray the prayer with you that jesus taught his disciples and he taught it to them and i love that it begins he says our father he doesn't say my father so it was not a personal prayer it was a prayer for the corporate collective body and he they tell him john taught his disciples lord teach us and i am like i said i'm all for anything jesus taught we must follow it and so i want you if you're at home if you would like to kneel down you'd like to stand up you are going to believe that you are connected intrinsically to the rest of the body of christ you're not an isolated island you are connected to the body of christ would you pray this lord's prayer with me and as we pray it can we ask that his will be done for the church that his will be done for individuals in the church that he would keep us from temptation as his chosen ones that he would set us apart that he would provide us all that we need can you make that your prayer let's pray this together our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors 
and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from the evil one in jesus name we pray amen amen god bless you i pray that as you continue the rest of the year that prayer will become a very part of your dna that you will not stop being persistent that you will pray for everything that you would believe god to come through for you god bless you thanks for listening to this message we hope you were blessed to hear more messages like this make sure to subscribe and check out our podcast channel for past episodes if you like what you are hearing consider rating us subscribing and even sharing it with friends that would really help us for more content from we are zion and to connect with us go to weazion.in remember whoever finds jesus finds life